Hadouken. Welcome to the No, I'm Mika. I'm Ben. And my sleeves are too long for my arms. <laughs> Gamers have set their angry eyes on the hottest new trend in microtransactions, the dreaded loot box, which is currently infiltrating just about every big game this fall with the promise of random loot in exchange for your cold, hard-earned cash. As a result, there has been a lot of discussion about the practice of loot boxes in general, with one question in particular getting a lot of attention. Should loot boxes be considered gambling? Hmm. And if that's the case, shouldn't games that feature them be rated differently, as it's illegal for minors to gamble? But unfortunately for all of you loot box haters out there, you probably shouldn't get your hopes up that loot boxes will earn an additional adult-only rating, because two of the industry's biggest rating boards have spoken, and according to them, loot boxes are A-OK. -okay. Well, OK until they're not. OK, makes sense. Yeah, sure. That's nice and helpful. But uh, <laughs> before we get to the comments made by the ratings board, let's back up a tad. Uh, if you haven't been made aware just yet, complaints about loot boxes have risen to a crescendo lately thanks to games like Shadow of War, Battlefront 2, and Forza 7, which all employ tactics that many players feel amount to shady business practices. Shadow of War's single-player loot boxes have raised issues about game balance and intentional grinding in the endgame, with the loot box being an easy way to skip out on some of the game's more repetitive scenarios for the final hours. Meanwhile, Forza 7's loot boxes caused a huge stir because they don't unlock cars, but rather mods that change the rate at which which you earn credit. So essentially you're hoping for better ways to earn in-game money. Sounds totally legit. Yeah. And uh, lastly, earlier this week, we saw some anger over Star Wars Battlefront 2, whose mechanics on the surface look about as close to pay to win as you can get, with the game's star card abilities shoved into loot boxes. So essentially, anyone who spends a bunch of money could have a pretty huge advantage over someone who doesn't. Different people will have different opinions about the severity of each of these games. There are plenty out there who feel like Shadow of War's loot boxes aren't that offensive, for example, but nevertheless, the three games landing so close close together have gotten people talking quite a bit. The real sticking point is whether or not loot boxes constitute real online gambling, since you spend money on a randomized outcome, and technically I guess that's what gambling is. All of that came to a head this week thanks in part to Total Biscuit, who called for more regulation on loot boxes from the American Video Games Rating Board, the ESRB. Total Biscuit said, look, if you include these kind of mechanics in these games and you actually allow people to buy these packs for real money, these random blind packs and engage in what is essentially a form of gambling, then you should be jacking the rating of your game up to mature. And many gamers agreed. After all, the industry has to start rating loot box games with mature or adult only ratings that would essentially limit their chances for succeeding, which would lead to less games with loot boxes. And the thing is, it's not the loot boxes necessarily that are the problem for most gamers. It's the peace of mind about whether or not the entire experience was tooled for them to get you to spend money. When that worry is in the back of your head or that you can't have fun with a progression system unless you throw in a credit card, it gets that much harder to enjoy a game. However, the ESRB has now responded to those calls from Total Biscuit and the gaming community. And according to them, loot boxes can't be considered a form of gambling because you're not getting money Back. Hmm, oh, okay. The ESRB <laughs> said in a statement to Kotaku, ESRB does not consider loot boxes to be gambling. While there's an element of chance in these mechanics, the player is always guaranteed to receive in-game content even if the player unfortunately receives something they don't want. We think of it as a similar principle to collectible card games. Sometimes you'll open a pack and get a brand new holographic card you've had your eyes on for a while, but other times you'll end up with a pack of cards you already have. At the moment, the ESRB does have categories for both real and simulated gambling. And by their own definition, real gambling has to involve a wager of actual currency, which is exactly what loot boxes are. The ESRB went on to tell Kotaku that any game found to have in real gambling would immediately receive an adult-only rating. Kotaku added that this would essentially kill a game at retail. They're, they're not wrong. If you're hoping that maybe the European ratings board would step in, it looks as if they're ambivalent. WCCF Tech caught up with the Pan-European Game Information Group, or PEGI for short, and they said, in short, our approach is similar to that of ESRB. I think all rating boards do, USK and Germany as well. The main reason for this is that we cannot define what constitutes gambling. This is the responsibility of a national gambling commission. Peggy went on to say, our gambling content descriptor is given to games that simulate or teach gambling as it's done in real life casinos, racetracks, etc. If gambling commission would state that loot boxes are a form of gambling, then we would have to adjust our criteria to that. The TLDR of all this is basically ESRB says loot boxes aren't gambling because real money isn't coming out of the boxes, even though real money goes in, and Peggy says, hey, it's not our job to decide what gambling 
gambling is. We just rate the video games. As for the industry side of things, we reached out to the ESA for comment, but haven't received a statement yet. So for all intents and purposes, they're essentially saying the same thing. The role of regulating loot boxes as gambling isn't our deal. That role falls to the decision of each individual state, as each one differs in how it defines gambling and what is or isn't allowed. Which is kind of curious, considering that both of these boards do decide what constitute too much violence or nudity for children to see. Plus, we actually have some evidence to show that loot boxes tap into the same part of the brain as gambling. One researcher from the Center for Gambling Research at the University of British Columbia recently told PC Gamer, the player is basically working for a reward by making a series of responses, but the rewards are delivered unpredictably. We know that the dopamine system, which is targeted by drugs of abuse, is also very interested in unpredictable rewards. Dopamine cells are most active when there is maximum uncertainty, and the dopamine system responds more to an uncertain reward than the same reward delivered on a predictable basis. All those effects are why gambling is restricted so heavily in the United States to begin with. Fun fact, if it's legal, it's referred to as gaming, and when it's illegal, it's referred to as gambling. So the rub is figuring out what's considered gambling and what isn't, and that will differ heavily from state to state, which is where things get even more complicated. For instance, some states ban lotteries while other ban racetracks, or if you're in Utah, you just ban all of it, but if you're in Japan, you just let me keep spending thousands and thousands of yen in gachapon, and oh my god, I just wasted so much of my money. Those differing standards have caused online gambling to become heavily regulated, because lawmakers don't want people able to break the laws of their state simply by claiming the internet as a defense. So the big question is, do loot boxes run afoul of internet gambling laws? The Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act was signed into law back in 2006 on October 13th, so actually happy birthday to that law! It doesn't specifically ban online gambling as a whole, but rather just heavily regulates certain aspects of it, namely the transfer of money that is intended for illegal gambling. It's kind of weird and open-ended, which is partly why fantasy football exists the way it does, and some have gotten around the wall in the past by adding middlemen to the transactions. The act defines a bet or a wager to include risking something of value on the outcome of a contest, sports event, or a game subject to chance. The game subject to chance restriction is designed to include things like internet poker. It considers betting to be any kind of lottery where the winning is subject to chance, which actually sort of sounds like loot boxes, but not 100%, so this is where the gray area is. Close, we're towing that line. Yeah. So unfortunately, if you were hoping video games would get regulated in this way on its own, right now it's looking slim. You're gonna have to hope for the government to step in for you, which is probably the last thing the rest of the industry wants. For now, it looks like gamers who don't like all those loot boxes will have to make their peace, and as always, vote with their wallets. What do you guys think of the video games rating board saying that loot boxes are A-OK? -okay? Let us know in the comments. For future updates on gambling and loot boxes and where all Mika money goes, remember to like this video, and if you're new around here, subscribe to the now. The real sticking point is whether or not loot boxes constitute a real, uh, real, not my game. And many gamers agreed, after all, the, Plus, we actually have some evidence to show that loot boxes tap into the brain of... Plus, we have some... One researcher from the Center for Gambling Research at the University... Bleh, bleh, words are dumb.